Shalom, shalom to the elect of the nation of Israel, the elect of Yahweh Shai. All praises and glory is due to Yahweh Barshem Yahweh Shai, Barshem Rakar Kodash, for giving us this knowledge, this truth, this understanding, especially in these times. Now, uh, speaking of these times, I'm not sure what title I'm going to put on this video, but the subject matter has to do with false teachers and false prophets. False teachers and false prophets. And you're looking at a couple of examples right here from what is called the GOCC Church. And it's not just them. It's really this video is a... Uh, this video is about all the false teachers and all the false prophets among the different groups in this ministry, all right? Different churches out there. And the question is, who makes a false prophet and a false teacher? Do they make themselves? Do they take on that... Um, ability by themselves or are they possessed to or are they possessed by a power that makes them a false teacher and a false prophet well the answer is they are possessed by a power that makes false teachers and false prophets and that power is the heavenly father Yahweh through his son Yahweh Shai the answer is the Heavenly Father Yahweh through His Son Yahweh Shai makes a false prophet and a false teacher. Deceives them, if you will. And uh, one of the main scriptures that proves that is the book of uh, Ezekiel, the 14th chapter, which I got here. Um, <clears throat> and I'll just read it. The book of Ezekiel 14 and 9. And this is one of the reasons why we have to fear the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son. Okay, because like we've been telling you Israelites out there, the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, through His Son, Yahweh Shai, they control both sides. Okay. As a matter of fact, let me read, before I read one of the main scriptures of this lesson, Ezekiel, the 14th chapter, let me read Isaiah, the 45th chapter, <laughs> and the 7th verse. It says, I form the light and create darkness. That's the Heavenly Father speaking through the prophet Isaiah, right? He said, I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. Let's, let's read that again. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. So if the Heavenly Father creates evil, then it stands to reason he can create a person of evil, such as a false teacher and a false prophet. He can create those individuals. And you might ask, well, why would he do that? Well, number one, to show his power. All right. Number two, to bring judgment on that individual. Okay, to bring judgment on that individual and in bringing judgment, he shows his power that other Israelites may fear. Okay, and time and time again, when you read the scriptures, the Heavenly Father have done that over and over again. Okay, as a matter of fact, let's go back to the main scripture and then I want to show you an example dealing with Pharaoh. All right, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, Ezekiel 14 and 9. And if the prophet be deceived when he have spoken a thing, right? I, the Lord, have deceived that prophet. <laughs> Did you catch that? The Heavenly Father, which his name is Yahweh, which, by the way, the word or the name Yahweh means he is. Meaning he's everything. He's good. He's evil. Right? He's good as well as evil. You might say, well, this guy is teaching blasphemy. He said that God is evil. Well, he created he create evil. 
All right. So he, if he, you know, he create evil. That means he can be evil if he wants to, and he can be righteous if he wants to. He's the heavenly Father. He's Yahweh. He created everything for His purpose. Okay. Now we know of the two. We know the heavenly Father prefer, prefers righteousness, but just because He prefers righteousness didn't mean He didn't create wickedness. He created wickedness for His purpose, and He created righteousness for His purpose. Like we always say that. This is the Heavenly Father's movie, and he's the ultimate director. Now, in a movie, right, you have, let's say you take a director like Ridley Scott, right, which is a, a good director. He makes good movies, Ridley Scott, right? Well, Ridley Scott, in his movies, he has to hire the good guy, right, as well as the bad guy. No matter how much you hate the bad guy, guess what? He has to be around in the movie for the to carry the movie until the script calls for the good guy to triumph over the bad guy. Then you won't see the bad guy no more, right? The script calls for him to die, he dies, right? And then the good guy wins. The good guy rides off into the sunset. <laughs> oh, by the way, this is uh, another edition of um, early, mo early morning thoughts and topics, all right? And we're dealing with the topic of false prophets. If I forgot to mention that, well, it's the same thing with the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son. We like to call the Heavenly Father Yahweh, the ultimate director, <coughs> and His only begotten Son. And this is their movie. And we're nothing but actors, man. We're nothing but actors in the movie of life, all right, which is directed by Yahweh Bashem Yahweh As a matter of fact, since I said that, let's get the book of Jeremiah 10. Let's, let's add to that, that the Heavenly Father directs man. If a man kills another man, you know who put the spirit on that man to do that? The Heavenly Father. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of people don't know that, man. And when, they, and when they hear it, you know, there's an old saying, truth is stranger than fiction. When they hear it, <laughs> they say, nah, 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 man, nah, nah, nah. I don't believe that. I can't accept that. Because they've been brainwashed by these wacky-tacky Christian churches. God is all love. God is all love every time. God is all love every time. They all understand that the Heavenly Father creates evil, man. And even if you read the scripture to them, it's, it, they, the first thing they'll say, what Bible is that? Nah, 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 nah. My God is good all the time. <laughs> yeah, your God. <laughs> you don't know the Heavenly Father, man. This is why Jeremiah 4 and 22 it says, my people are foolish. As a matter of fact, let me get that. I'm already in Jeremiah. Let's go back a few chapters. And let's go get that scripture, man. This is how you learn the Heavenly Father. You learn the Heavenly Father through these scriptures. And you have to have a qualified teacher to teach you these scriptures. All right? This is Jeremiah 4 and 22. For my people, who's, who's God's people, according to the Bible? The Israelites is God's people, man. Not every not every people is God's people. Even though he created every people, all the other nations, the true the, the one nation that is his true people are the Israelites. From the book of Genesis to the book of Revelation, it tells you that. God's people are the Israelites. But then you have these people. No, everybody is God's people. <laughs> well, they're deceived because God wants them to be deceived. That's the simple answer to that. Jeremiah 4 and 22, for my people is foolish. They have not known me. See, an example of that is they believe that God is love all the time. When that's simply not the case. If there's a major storm, who guess who brought it? God brought it. Clearly in the book of Amos, they said, the, the scripture says, Shall there be evil in the city and the Lord have not done it? Did you know that? Did you know that evil is brought in the city by the Lord? So, let's keep reading. For my people is foolish. They have not known me. They are sottish children. Sottish means stupid when you look it up. Stupid. And they have none understanding none understanding concerning the heavenly father his true nature his true character that he's good as well as evil he deals with both sides he creates both sides you have to learn this 
Because what that does is it generates fear in you for the Heavenly Father's only begotten Son. I mean, why would you fear someone that's all love? This is one of the reasons why the majority of people don't fear the Heavenly Father. And the scriptures clearly tell us the beginning of wisdom is the fear of the Heavenly Father. You know, they'll say, I love the Lord. And if loving the Lord is wrong, I don't want to be right. Meanwhile, they're doing everything that the Lord said not to do. But meanwhile, they say they fear the Lord. That's hypocrisy. Now, if you understand, I mean, they say they love the Lord. Let me say that again. They say they love the Lord, but they don't do what the Lord say to do. That's hypocrisy. Now, if you understand that the Lord is to be feared, if you understand that he's to be feared, then you're going to think twice in doing something that he said not to do because you fear him. Fear lasts longer. Fear is more powerful than your so-called love. Okay? That's what the Heavenly Father is looking for. He's looking for fear from, from his servants. He wants fear. So knowing that he creates both sides generates fear. And that's a good thing, man. Because clearly we see here that the, the Heavenly Father have already said his people are foolish, they don't know him. And if they don't know him, how can they fear him? For my people is foolish, they have not known me. They are sottish children. They have none understanding. They are wise to do evil, but to do good, they have no knowledge. And one of the reasons why the majority of the Heavenly Father's people don't know him because the Heavenly Father have blinded them from not knowing him. <laughs> Check that out. But then he'll turn around and judge them. That's why it's a good thing to fear the Heavenly Father, man. At the end of the day, what makes the most sense is fear in the Heavenly Father. So, let me go uh, to Jeremiah 10 and 23. Let's read that. Because who directs man? Jeremiah 10 and 23. O Lord, I know that the way of man is not in himself. It is not in man that walketh to direct his steps. So the question is, who directs the steps of man? The Heavenly Father. So whether a man does good or evil, the Heavenly Father directed that man to do what he does, whether it be good or evil. Okay? The Heavenly Father is the ultimate director. His name is Yahweh and his son's name is Yahweh Shai. Because now Yahweh is given all power to Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Shai clearly said that. Let's get another one. Uh, Proverbs. And these are the bread and butter scriptures that I learned when I first came into school. One of the first things I learned when I came into school many years ago at 1 West, 125th Street, was that the Heavenly Father deals with both sides. He created both sides. And that never left me because that was so profound. I've, nev I've never heard anything like that. For all I know, before I came to school, you know, I had just turned almost 25 years, 25 years old. For all I knew, knew, from what I'd known of the Heavenly Father before I came to school, was that he was all good. He was all love. Everything that's good was the Heavenly Father. That's what we were taught. But that's not the 100% accurate truth. The 100% ac accurate truth is that he... He deals with both sides. He creates good as well as evil. That's the truth. Okay? And what that does is it makes us fear the Heavenly Father, man. Proverbs, uh, the 16th chapter, the ninth verse. A man's heart, now in the, in the Hebrew, the word there is for heart is mind. Mind. The, the Hebrew word there is lab, which means mind. Okay? It should say it here. <clears throat> Let's just take a look at it. A man's heart, right? It is right here. Yep, the Hebrew word that you see there is lab. The first letter is la and the second one is ba. You put it together, lab, lab. You see they got lab here. Actually, it's lab. See, in a man, mind, mind. That's all we need to see, mind. So when it says, uh, now you, you're getting it. When it says, 
a man's heart, meaning a man's mind. In the Hebrew, the word there is lab, which means mind. A man's mind deviseth his way. Yeah, a man will say, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. But the Lord directeth his steps. <laughs> so you know what that does? That destroys that free will crap that we learned from Esau. We got free will. No, we don't. Whatever we're going to do or didn't do is directed by the Lord, directed by the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, through his son, Yahweh Shai, who are the angels. Because the angels, they work for the Heavenly Father. They work on the minds of men at the behest of the Heavenly Father. The angels do. Let's get another one. In case that wasn't... Uh, that wasn't... Um, plain enough for you well this one will be the book of ezekiel 33 and 15 it just can't come to mind i'm sorry not ezekiel job 33 and 15 i haven't read this scripture in a while it's been a while since i read this scripture job 33 and 15 well let me start at 14 for god speaketh once his name is yahweh right son's name is yahweh shai for the heavenly father speaketh once, yea, twice, yet man perceiveth it not. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falleth upon men, and slumberings upon the bed, then he openeth the ears of men, and sealeth their instruction. Let me read that again. That's the 16th verse. Now, you don't see scriptures like that in these wacky tacky churches you know why because they don't know the scriptures they've been blinded to scriptures like this because the holy spirit is not dealing with these wacky tacky churches these wacky tacky christians that's that's why they believe that they're in control of their destiny and the answer is no no man or woman or child is in control of their destiny the Heavenly Father controls everything, man. Yahweh Shai made a statement. He said, a sparrow don't fall to the ground unless the Heavenly Father sanctioned it. Think about that. A sparrow, that's a small bird, insignificant bird. But it can't die unless the Father sanctioned the death of a sparrow. So how much more man? Huh? So anything that happens to us, the Heavenly Father sanctioned it to happen to us, whether it be good or evil. Okay? Our destiny is in the hands of the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, man. Job 33 and 16 again. Then He opened, then He openeth the ears of men and sealeth their instruction. Next verse. That He may withdraw man from His purpose. So that destroys free will. Okay? That destroys free will. There's no such thing as free will. The will of man is the will of the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son first. Whether it's in man to do good or evil, it's the will of the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son first, which He gives to man. He gives man His purpose, tells them what to do or not do. Okay? that he may withdraw man from his purpose and hide pride from man. Yeah, man got pride. Yeah, this, yeah, this is our free will, my free will. He ain't got no free will, man. So you, so you people out there, remove that nonsense from your head. Anyway, let's get back to Proverbs 16 and 9. A man's heart deviseth his way, but the Lord directeth his steps. So the question is, who creates a false prophet? If man's will is in the hand of the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, if a guy desires to be a prophet because of the will of the Heavenly Father, if he's a true prophet, the Heavenly Father created him. If he's a false prophet, the Heavenly Father also created him for His purpose. And it's, cl it's clearly said here. Ezekiel 14 and 9. And if the prophet be deceived when I when he have spoken a thing, I the Lord have deceived that prophet. <laughs> so, you know, you got as of late we've been getting on this guy 
Elder Rakar of the GOCC and, and his partner. Let me, show, let me show you what they look like, right? Bear with me for a minute. I want to bring them up on screen here. <clears throat> yeah, these two characters Tell right here. The, the Lord is the one that have deceived both these guys. Okay? The Lord have deceived them to make an example out, out of them. Also, to keep the path of truth narrow. Okay, that's one of the reasons why the Lord have done it. The path of truth is never meant to be wide the path of truth was meant to be narrow so what keeps it narrow in finding the truth is that there are many false prophets and teachers out there as a matter of fact we're going to come to this uh ezekiel 14 and 9 i want to tell you there are more false prophets and false teachers uh than there are true ones in this ministry Let me say that again. There are many false prophets and false teachers than there are true ones. All right. And the reason why they're around is because the Heavenly Father have created them for his purpose. So at this point, it's up to you, the listener, to discern between the false teachers and the false prophets and the true ones. That, that job is left to you. Now, if you're a member of the elect, you will be able to do just that. You'll be able to discern between who's teaching the truth, 100% truth in this ministry, and who is not. Who is a false teacher and a false prophet, and who is not. If you're a member of the elect, you'll be able to do just that. And that's why I do videos like this, to help you, to assist you, to show you that the Lord have created the false teacher and the false prophets. Uh, 2 Peter 2 and 1. But there were false prophets also among the people. Why were there false prophets among the people? Because the Heavenly Father created them for His purpose. What's the judgment of a false prophet? Destruction, man. And what does that serve? Well, that serves to put fear in the Lord's people when He destroys the false prophet. Which is exactly what he's going to do. We're going to read that back in Ezekiel, the 14th chapter. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privately shall bring in damnable heresies. And the elder recall of the GCC, GOCC more than qualifies for that. And not just him. You know, he's the t-shirt of the week right now. He's the flavor of the week. <laughs> But there's other false teachers and false prophets. There are many of them, man. You know, as it stands right now, Nate is a false teacher and a false prophet. The heads of Sakari, they're false teachers and false prophets. Okay? I'm just telling you like it is. All right? Uh, what is that? One body in the Hawashai? The head guy and the guys under him, you know, they're false teachers and false prophets. Okay, but there, shall, there were false prophets among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privately shall bring in damnable heresies, that's false doctrines. Okay, like right now, let's, let's take a look at the group Sakari of the heads. You know, they believe in sex on the Sabbath. That's a damnable heresy, sex on the Sabbath. They also have their heads covered when they teach. They make it a point to cover their whole head when they teach. That's a damnable heresy. Okay? We're supposed to uncover our head when we teach these scriptures. As a sign of respect to Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. But they see it different. Who put the spirit on them to be like that? The Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son. And you might ask, well, why? So when the Heavenly Father destroys them, 
make an example out of them, everybody else will see and fear. That's why. Okay? So even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privately shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that brought them, we got certain false teachers and false prophets that deny the name, something as serious as the name of the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son. Is that not an example of even denying the Lord that brought them and bring upon themselves swift destruction? There you go. And bring upon themselves swift destruction. So that swift destruction is going to serve as fear for our people, man. Because at the end of the day, the Heavenly Father is looking for fear. The scriptures say the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And, and, and our people are hard-headed, stiff. It tells you that in Ezekiel, they are hard-headed and stiff-necked people. Stiff-necked, hard-headed, stubborn. So when they see that destruction, man, that's going <laughs> to that's gonna bring the fear of the Most High in them. Okay? <laughs> Let's keep reading. And many shall follow their pernicious ways. It says many now. Many. And we see that now. Many shall follow their pernicious ways. Let's go look up that word pernicious. <clears throat> pernicious ways. Pernicious. Having a harmful effect, especially in a gradual and subtle way. And we've seen that with that, that group, but I have to say, that Sakari group. Start with them. You know, they subtly, they're, 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 they're doing their wickedness gradually. Remember, it is written, I think it was the Apostle Paul who said that to Timothy, evil men shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Let me quote that scripture again. It says, evil men shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. And who deceived them? The Heavenly Father, through His only begotten Son. And the Heavenly Father uses them to deceive others. See how deep this thing is, man? Wow. So we learned the word pernicious, right? Many shall follow their pernicious ways. That's gradual evil. Evil men shall wax worse and worse. When you see a false prophet and a false teacher, he ain't going to get better. He's going to get worse and worse. And he's gonna, he, he himself is deceived by the Heavenly Father. We just read that in Ezekiel. And he's deceiving others. The Heavenly Father is using him to deceive others. Others that he don't want. Others that are not part of the elect. Now, you can't deceive the elect. Let's get that. The elect is going to be shielded from being deceived. That's why we, we, we here at Great Millstone, we say uh, of the hopeful elect. We hope we're part of the hopeful elect. It is right here. The book of Matthew 24 and 24. For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets. Why? Because the Heavenly Father created them. That's why. That's why they're around. Let me say that again. They are around. These false teachers and these false prophets are around because the Heavenly Father created them for His purpose in this ministry. To deceive, the, to deceive others. Deceive themselves and deceive others because they're not part of the elect. The only ones the Heavenly Father right, wants right now is the elect, the members of the elect. For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets. False Christ means false anointed. People that say they're anointed and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders in so much that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. And you notice, right, in this Israelite thing, a lot of these false teachers and false prophets, they have, they have huge congregations, man. A lot of people watch them, especially women. It's really mostly women. And the scriptures speak about that. Silly women laden with sins. All right? And, you know, the men, they follow the women. So there you go. It's just like these wacky-tacky churches. The ones who go to these wacky-tacky churches are mostly the women. And the men end up following them. Okay? Because uh, the scriptures tell you that uh, uh, women rule over them. You know? Uh, yeah, women rule over them. Right? To, 
to roughly paraphrase that scripture. <clears throat> uh, back to the second verse, 2 Peter 2 and 2. And many shall follow their pernicious ways by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. There you go, man. So back to Ezekiel 14 and 9. And if the prophet be deceived when, I, when he hath spoken a thing, I, the Lord, have deceived that prophet. So who creates false prophets? The Heavenly Father does through his only begotten Son. Point blank, end of story, man. I, the Lord, have deceived that prophet, and I will stretch out my hand upon him and will destroy him from the midst of my people Israel. <laughs> there you go. That is plain. So eventually all these false teachers... These false prophets, if they don't repent, if they do not repent, they will be destroyed. Clearly we read that I, the Lord, will stretch out my hand against these false prophets, false teachers, and destroy them from the midst of my people Israel. And he'll do it for everyone to see so they can fear. Okay, how he's going to do it is, is left up to the Heavenly Father and his only begotten son, how he's going to destroy these false prophets and false teachers. All right. So at this point, I'll leave it there. I believe the point is made. I was going to bring out the scripture about Pharaoh. As a matter of fact, you know what? Before I go, let, let's talk about Pharaoh. All right. Even though Pharaoh was a heathen, the point is who hardened Pharaoh's heart? Did Pharaoh harden his own heart that he was stubborn and disobedient to the Heavenly Father's command of letting his people go, that being the Israelites, or did the Heavenly Father harden his heart? Well, the Heavenly Father hardened his heart. Let's read it. And the Heavenly Father told Moses, I'm going to harden his heart. When I send you to Pharaoh to tell him, look, let the Lord's people go, I am going to harden his heart so he's not going to listen to you. The Heavenly Father told him that. <laughs> it is right here. Uh, we're just going to read what the Apostle Paul said about it because we can learn a lot from that. Why, why, another point why it is wisdom to fear the Heavenly Father because he can harden your heart. Hey, a false teacher and a false prophet, the reason why they're false teachers and false prophets is because their heart is hardened. Their heart is hardened to what the Heavenly Father have said. Now, clearly there's a scripture, King David said it, harden not your hearts as in the day of provocation. What happened in the day of provocation? Many Israelites were killed, man, because they provoked the Heavenly Father unto anger. That's why it was called the day of provocation. All right? And that's what we that's what we see now with guys like Elder Rakar and you know, and the heads of Sakari and the different, you know, these different groups, the head, one body and all these different groups that are teaching these crazy way with the ISU. Can't forget about them. ISUPK, the heads there, they're provoking the Heavenly Father to anger. And eventually the Heavenly Father is going to respond with judgment, brutal judgment. <laughs> and this is Romans, the ninth chapter, the 17th verse. For the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, well, let me start at uh, 15, Romans 9 and 15. For he saith to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. And right now he's having mercy on the elect, the elect of the nation of Israel. Anybody outside of that, the Lord ain't having mercy on them. So the Lord will allow them to be blinded to the truth. Clearly it tells you that in Isaiah the sixth chapter. The Lord will set up false prophets to blind them. What did Yahweh Shai said? Let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, both is going to fall into a ditch. So the Heavenly Father set up the false prophets and the false teachers to blind the ones that he don't want. I mean, it, again, it's plain, man. Okay? That, so if you're wondering why these false teachers and false prophets are in Israel, of the different groups, now you know why. The Heavenly Father want them there to blind the ones that he don't want, including their own selves. Check that out. For he saith to Moses, I will have mercy 
on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. <laughs> so then it is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth. Wait a minute, what, what happened to free will? Huh? So then it is not of him that willeth, free will, free will, nor of him that runneth, but of the Most High that showeth mercy. See? So, <laughs> for the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, even for this same purpose have I raised thee up. So the Heavenly Father can raise up a false prophet and a false teacher, build them up, fatten them up for the kill. That's what he's doing now with these false teachers and these false prophets out here. He's fattening them up for the kill, man. <laughs> Have I raised thee up that I might show my power in thee and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth? Yeah, when he brings them down, his power is magnified. His name is magnified. See, that's the method, man. The method of the Heavenly Father. That's the method of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. Therefore, have he mercy on whom he will have mercy and whom he will, he hardeneth. See? Thou wilt say then unto me, why doth he yet find fault? Yeah, if the Heavenly Father hardeneth a man, why would he find fault in him? He's the one that did it. Uh, why doth he yet find fault? For who have resisted his will? That destroys free will. Who have resisted his will? Nay, but, O man, who art thou that repliest against the heavenly father that's right he's the heavenly father we're but men we're but dirt you know the lord called jacob a worm man <laughs> nay but O oh man who art thou that replies against the heavenly father shall the thing form say to him that formed it why hast thou made me thus yeah have not the potter power over the clay who's the potter the heavenly father is the potter and we're the clay have not the potter power over the clay of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor and another unto dishonor. So now let's bring in the false teachers and the false prophets. What would they be? They would be unto dishonor. They're created. The false teachers and the false prophets are created to bring what? Dishonor. And then the true teachers, the true prophets are created to bring what? Honor. It all goes back to the Heavenly Father, man. He controls everything. That's the point. And he created the false prophet. All right? The false teacher. He hardened their hearts. He made them blind that they can't see. All right? Like Yahweh Shai said, let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind. Yahweh Shai understood this. The, uh, Yahweh Shai rebuked the false teachers and false prophets. But he didn't seek to destroy them, which he could have destroyed them if he wanted to. Think about it. How Yahweh had spiritual power. If he wanted to, he could have destroyed the false teachers and false prophets. Yahweh understood they were an integral part of the ministry. They had to be around. They were what you call a necessary evil. And it's the same thing now. So brothers, don't get all bent out of shape when you see these false teachers and false prophets. We just rebuke them and reprove them until they receive their, their judgment, their destruction. That's the plan, man, because they got to be around. The Heavenly Father created them. All right, so I'm going to end it there. Hopefully you were edified by this uh, early morning thoughts and topics. And uh, it's on to the next one.